Okay, I think we are. Okay, we're live. Now let me share the screen over here. Okay, perfect. All right, we're continuing uh, Friday, the first, it's Rosh Chodesh, the first of Sivan, uh, June 7th. And we're in Bamidbar, where Moshe is counting, uh, just finished counting the Levites. And now we're going to continue. Count every firstborn male aged one month and upward of the children of Israel. Visa, Ace, Mispar, Shmoisam, and take the number of their names. Um, Rashi, count every firstborn male aged one month and upward from the time he is no longer categorized as a possible premature baby like we had mentioned in last week's Parsha. Not last week's Parsha, in yesterday's Chitas. Um, okay, I'm not sure what that comment is. Oh, yeah, that is true. So maybe he discovered. Okay. V'lakachta meshalavim li ani Hashem and you shall take the Levites for me. I am Hashem instead of all the firstborns among the Jewish people. And also the Levites' animals instead of the firstborns' animals of the children of Israel. And Moshe counted every firstborn as um, Hashem commanded. Um, he counted every one of the firstborns of Israel as Hashem commanded. And the firstborn males, one month and upwards, according to the number of names, was 22,273. Take the Levites, instead of all the firstborns among the children of Israel, and the Levites' animals, instead of all their animals, uh, and Levites shall be mine, I am the Lord. And the Levites' animals, the Levites' animals did not redeem the did not redeem the clean firstborn animals of the Israelites, but their firstborn donkeys. One lamb belonging to a Levite could exempt many firstborn donkeys of an Israelite. The proof is that Scripture counts the excess number of firstborn men, but not the extra animals. As for the 273 of the children of Israel who require redemption, who are in excess of the Levites, if you remember how many uh, um, how many firstborns we have and how many Levites we had in yesterday's, you'll see that there was an excess of 73, of 273. You shall take five shekels per head, According to the holy shekel, by which the shekel is 20 geras. That's how much the shekel was in those days. It was the equivalent of 20 geras. And as the Akes of Aaron, you shall give the money to Aaron Ulavanov and his children, Pikudeim, as a redemption, Ha'itvim Bahem, for the four spoons who are in access, excess of them. Um, today, all the way till today, we still do. Uh, uh, Pidyon Haben for our firstborn, as many of you know. And Moshe took the Pidyon money, the redemption money, for those in excess of those redeemed by the Levites. Those remain, Rashi, those remaining after the Levites had redeemed them with their very selves. So all those extra people were redeemed with money. He took the money from the firstborn. One thousand three hundred and sixty-five of the holy shekel. Uh, let's look at Rashi. He does the actual calculation, I believe. This is the sum total. At five shekels per head, for 204 firstborns, a, uh, a thousand shekels. 
for 70 firstborns, um, 350 shekels. For three firstborns, 15 shekels. So if you calculate up what 200, it's very simple, 273 times 5 is 1365, which is exactly what the Pasuk says, 1,365. Because it was 5 shekels per additional person. And there was 273 additional people. I hope that makes sense to everybody. And then Moshe gave the money of those redeemed, to Aaron and his sons, Al Hashem, Kasher, Tziva Hashem, as Moshe, in accordance with the word of Hashem, as Hashem had commanded Moshe. Now, I guess the next question you can ask is, how much was 1365? We know that 1365, each shekel was 20 tigera. So 1365 times 20 means that it was 27,000 gera. How much was a gera worth? This I leave for homework for you guys to figure out how much was the gera. So how much was the additional value that Aaron and his sons received? Okay. Let's go into the Tanya for today. We're continuing uh, chapter 52. We're still in the middle. Lakutte Amarim, chapter 52. And we had talked about how we obviously need something to conceal the Shechina. Right? The Shechina can't come straight down to the world or straight down to, to us. It needs a type of uh, what we call a clothing, a garment, a luvush, just like a garment protects you from the exterior um, elements. So to over here, the garments can protect us. Otherwise, we become nullified from the shechina. We become nullified or, or really become like a ray in a ray of sun light when it's in the sun, which is obviously nothing. The ray is only um, visible when it is far away from the sun. So the same over here, if we, we, we would be like a ray in a sun, if this, if there was nothing to protect us. So, so uh, the altar Rebbe says, Umau alavush, What is this garment, in quotations, which is able to conceal and, cl and clothe the Shekhinah, and will not become lechayra. There's a there's a, there's a problem. It would seem there's a problem. How does the garment itself not become nullified from all that light? It's also what what uh, powers everything is powered by Hashem. Even the garment itself. Okay, so. Let's see. This is the will of Hashem in His wisdom. That the the mulubashim, the garments, are Torah and mitzvahs. Which were revealed to us and to our children. So Hashem's will and wisdom, that is, i.e., the Torah, that is, Let's read this note. Why are God's will and wisdom and so forth able to act as a concealing garment for the light of the Shekhinah without themselves being nullified by it? How is this possible? So the Altar continues, Because Torah issues from wisdom, from the Chachma Ilah, it actually comes from a higher place than the actual Shekhinah. Namely, Chachma Ilah, that is immeasurably higher than the world of manifestation, which is the Shechina. So it's kind of, it's got a, it's able to be, let's, let's, we haven't fully developed this thought, but it seems like that actually the garments are, they have like a, a protection because they actually come from a higher source. So that's why they don't become nullified. Well, let's, let's see. As mentioned earlier, Shekhinah refers to the initial stage of revelation, for which reason, for which reason it is called 
the world of manifestation. Since Chachma is entirely beyond the pale of revelation, is therefore immeasurably higher than the Shechina. But okay, so then, then wouldn't, then how could we even have those garments? Let's see. The the e the e e chachim ida for he is wise with the wisdom of chachma itself, but not with the knowledge of wisdom and so forth. Well, that's just proving that it's higher level. Commission is far l'el shar ein seif baruch hu melubish umiyuchad bechachma yila v'hu yisparach bechachma say echad. As has been previously explained, that the the ar ein seif the infinite light is clothed and united with the chachma yila. And he and his wisdom are one. Okay, so this was that was still proved, saying, explaining how um, Taira and mitzvahs come from an even higher level of Chachmaila. But it, it would seem like that Chachmaila, how could it even protect us if it comes from an even higher level than the Shechina? Let's look at this note. Thus, Chachma, as well as the other levels of divine intelligence, such as Bina and Das, are far superior to the level of the light of the Shechina. They are therefore able to serve as a garment concealing the Shechina without being nullified by its life. But how can divine intelligence serve as a garment, and how can created beings accept this garment when it is in fact loftier than the Shechina itself? So it doesn't make sense. If you're saying that the reason why the garments, which is Torah Mitzvahs, Hashem's will and wisdom, right? That's what is protecting us from the Shechina and the reason why it doesn't become nullified is because it's from an even higher level, then how can we even have that? Okay, so why? Rock only This wisdom of the Torah has also descended by means of obscuring and histalshalos. He's obscuring gradations from a higher grade to a lower grade. Um, until it is descended all the way into the Gashmias, Shehim Taryag Mitzvah Satera, which these are the 13, 613 um, Mitzvahs of the Torah. So basically, yes, Chachma Ilaf, it's, it's able to protect us from the Shechina because it comes from a really high source. Higher than the Shechina itself. But how could we handle this? We could handle it because actually it's been also, um, uh, it's been yard, it, it, it went down from level to level until so much so that even a gosh mystic thing, like a pair of tefillin, have kedusha and have a mitzvah in, in, in something actually physical. When it comes from the will of Hashem of such a high level of Chachmaila. Okay, let's go. Um, oh, the Tehillim for today uh, is the, we're back at the beginning. So it's chapters one through nine of the Tehillim. Everybody should have a wonderful uh, Rosh Chodesh, Chodesh Tov, and an amazing.